Hello dear Sensei and dear colleagues, um, I'm Asl Sakandis, a fall 2020 student from a PhD class. Uh, I'm going to give you a psychoanalytic reading of uh, Brick's uh, masculinity in Tennessee Williams's Cat on a Hat Tin Roof. Uh, in order to give you a deeper understanding of the psychoanalytic criticism of literature, uh, first of all, uh, I'm going to provide you with the basic questions you should ask yourselves while reading a text uh, through a psychoanalytic lens. And second of all, uh, we are going to discover the main character uh, Brick's conflicts and uh, compensations uh, in accordance with the circumstances uh, surrounding him. And third of all, uh, and finally, uh, we are going to come to a conclusion and a criticism at the same time in terms of the outcomes of the psychoanalysis of Brick and uh, psychoanalysis of the other characters as well. So uh, without any further ado, uh, let's dive into our topic. Well, dear sensei and dear colleagues, my topic is uh, the psychoanalytic reading of uh, Briggs' masculinity in uh, Cat on a Hutton Room. So in order to um, make the things clearer, I need to give you how to do a psychoanalytic reading in, in general. So I wanted you to see this diagram first. Yes, it shows us for its own diagram, by the way. As we see, as we understand, the majority of the mental apparatus is not conscious. As we learned from our lessons, our sessions too, yes, it's unconscious. Mm -hmm. And um, Sigmund Freud's uh, study. Uh, first, I'm going to talk about Sigmund Freud's um, study on the inner workings of the human mind. And this is what we call psychoanalysis, actually. According to Freud, our desires, memories, uh, repressions, and unconscious thoughts they all create the basis of human behavior. And in literature, we take this theory, uh, Freud's theory, and apply it to the analysis of characters and their choices. So this sort of analysis is called a psychoanalytic theory of literature. And every piece of literature has characters with motivations. So a psychoanalytic criticism gives us the opportunity to discover these motivations and characters' reactions to frustrations. And as an outcome, it, uh, let's say, uh, it leads us to the compensations that the characters made and, and the stories. So, um, the psychoanalytic approach to any literary text is highly beneficial to examine the characters or the author's conflicts and drives closer. In the light of psychoanalytic discourse, we can even explain all the, um, uh, let's say, all the blurred circumstances and events which the characters have to cope with throughout the story. So, my presentation uh, offers an investigation of the central character, Brick's impulsive and also irrational behaviors uh, that he shows uh, from one act to another throughout the play. And so, what does a psychoanalytic critic or criticism do? Uh, a psychoanalytic criticism 
focuses on the distinction between the conscious and unconscious mind in a literary work. So they also uncover unconscious feelings and motives of both the author and the characters. And they also highlight psychoanalytic symptoms, phases and conditions. And they check if there is a uh, there is another reason, there is an extraordinary reason for the author uh, use repeat the words, some specific words, let's say, over and over and over again. This is very important because these words uh, usually uh, have been used for uh, on purpose, mm -hmm. uh, consciously, and they might have really deep and interesting meanings also. Yes, Lois Tyson states that uh, the notion that human beings are motivated, even driven by desires, fears, needs and conflicts of which they are unaware. Uh, yeah, as we know, uh, every writing is a production of human mind. So psychology and uh, literary work are linked to one another when it comes to analyzing the work by uh, studying human behavior. The reason behind the motivation leading our characters to do that certain, that specific action is uh, revealed by the psychoanalytic examination of both the text and the author. So in the case of approaching to a heavily biographical play, uh, which is Cat on a Hutton Roof, Tennessee Williams's play, and uh, Tennessee Williams's life should be taken into consideration, should be analyzed uh, so as to understand and establish a proper connection between Brick, his protagonist, and Tennessee himself. And I'm gonna give you a brief introduction to the text first. Mm -hmm. okay, I'm going to talk a little bit about Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, the story. Okay. I show you the, the keywords, the key phrases related to the play, to, to the text. And Tennessee Williams's play, Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, is the story of Southern family. And especially the husband, Rick, and uh, his wife, Margaret, we call her Maggie the Cat throughout the story, and their relationship, their interaction with uh, Briggs' family. Um, there is a one-night gathering at uh, the family uh, building in Mississippi. So the party celebrates the birthday of Big Daddy, uh, who is the patriarchal uh, father uh, in the story, and they also Delta's uh, biggest planter. So he returned from the he returns from the clinic with a uh, positive uh, positive news mm -hmm, uh, about his health. All the family members uh, are actually they're aware of Big Daddy's true uh, condition. What is it? It is actually he's dying of cancer. Uh, his family has lied to him, has lied to Big Daddy and Big Mama to to save them, actually, to save them from pain on the Big Daddy's birthday. But uh, during the play, during the uh, story, it becomes clearer that the family has has long constructed a web of um, 
hypocrisy and mendacity actually and so mendacity and lying are key themes uh, during our uh, story yes now we dive into our main concern uh, a psychoanalysis of bricks masculinity in Katana Hatin Roof. Okay. Yeah, after Skipper's death. After Skipper's death, uh, Brick has quit the work. He started drinking alcohol and he injured his ankle while attempting to jump. Um, hurdles on the high school track field. He did this because he tries to live his glorious sportive past again. He says that because I used to and people, uh, now I'm quoting from the book, because I used to and people like to do what they used to do after they have stopped being able to do it. Yeah. He gets a click that makes him peaceful when he had enough drink. Uh, Brick, during the story, goes to the liquor cabinet and takes a drink, freshens his drink. He confesses that he drinks because he is disgusted by mendacity or uh, by the liars. Uh, from psychoanalytical approach, we, as the readers, witness his withdrawal, his escape from his current situation by how? By continuous the drinking. And in the meantime, Margaret, Maggie, uh, his wife, Brick's wife, tries to approach and touch him. But Brick reminds her that she agreed to conditions. Uh, he refuses her and grabs a chair to block her. Uh, Brick says that he would feel relieved to know that she took a lover, but Margaret says that she will take no chance. She would rather stay on her hut and roof, she says. And Margaret's motivation here is, uh, let's say, Defeating Gupra and May, the other characters in the story, uh, Brick's brother, and their purpose is also having the plantation after Big Daddy's death. So Margaret's motivation is also uh, defeating them, this couple, and having the plantation of Big Daddy. She talks about having been poor all her life. Always uh, she had to uh, kiss up to relatives that she didn't like just because they had money. She says this is because she's like a cat on a hot tin roof because she doesn't want to be old and poor at the same time. This is her motivation. And suppressed feelings for Skipper. When Maggie, uh, when Maggie starts to talk about Skipper and Brick, uh, he gets mad. Brick gets mad and tries to hit Maggie with his crutch. Uh, deep suppressed feelings for Skipper. Uh, ignoring of unresolved conflicts of Brick. Actually, this is what we see. What we obviously see when we uh, read the story. This experience is uh, forced out of conscious awareness and into the realm of unconscious. Uh, Brick's vital need for alcohol is because of his wish for repressing his memory and desire for Skipper. Alcohol is a way of uh, delaying pain tempor temporarily, just uh, for a short time, getting rid of the suffer. So when 
some fear, memory or desire is difficult to face, we may try to cope with it by repressing, by denying it, by eliminating it from the conscious mind, right? So, uh, but it, this does not make it go away. Uh, this does not make it disappear. It remains there. Uh, as you said, Sensei, in the sessions, uh, it remains there, it remains alive in the unconscious. It constantly uh, tries to find a way back into our conscious mind and always finds a way, always finds a way to come back, to uh, reappear, right? And as Freud said, uh, I am quoting now, uh, there is always a return of the repressed. There is always a return of the repressed. And Freudian interpretation uh, has always been uh, of considerable interest to literary critics due to the fact that the unconscious, uh, like novel, poem or play, cannot speak directly and explicitly, but does so through images, through symbols and metaphors. So literature as well uh, make implicit statements about life by showing it. Psychoanalytic criticism in literature pays uh, close attention to unconscious motives and feelings. And whether those be of the authors or of the characters depicted in the literary work, in the text. Yes, let's move on to the next slide. Yeah, homosexual taboos. We see taboos here uh, at this part of the story. Homosexual taboos of the time the story was said, make the expression of sexual feelings towards a man difficult or even impossible. We see repression of homosexuality as Brick represses his feelings towards Kipper uh, during the play. He repeats that, uh, I had friendship with Skipper, you're naming it dirty. Uh, he often blames Maggie, uh, his wife, for revealing their relationship, uh, his feelings for Brick, and uh, leading to Skipper's death afterwards. Sadly, we see that he is uneasy about something, reminding him again of his, uh, let's say, of his uh, anxiety. So his unconscious protects him by deleting the uncomfortable part this part is very important uh, his conscious protects him by deleting the uncomfortable uh, part of the story from his conscious memory uh, which is his sexuality and feelings for a skipper which is forbidden in many ways when we consider the period and the uh, Southern America. So, in fact, from a wider perspective, uh, Brick blames himself, right? He, he cannot face the truth because uh, this is the reason uh, he cannot face the bitter truth. Actually, uh, above all, he blames himself. Uh, yes, this is why Brick's uh, this is the reason for Briggs' denial and displacement. Mm -hmm. Now again, I'm quoting uh, Big Daddy, Big Daddy's quotation. You're disgusted. Uh, here Big Daddy talks to his son, Brick. Uh, you're disgusted and which you're drinking to kill your disgust with Brick. You've been passing the buck. This disgust with mendacity is disgust with yourself. Yes, Brick actually blames himself 
and it is Brick who cannot face the truth and feels that deep disgust with everything. Um, yeah. Interpretation of his desire for Skipper is revealed from his uh, subconscious emotions of anger and hatred for Maggie, for Big Daddy and for any other characters in the story. Uh, from psychoanalytical point of view, his anger actually uh, was not aimed uh, at them, at these characters, but himself. So for this reason, we can say that his actions are um, motivated by his subconscious desires, right? And additionally, uh, by the way, another takeaway for me is that Briggs intense disgust and uh, his disgust and fury towards Maggie uh, comes from her attempt to make love with Skipper. But how? Uh, because Brick has uh, feelings for Skipper, he cannot stand the idea that his wife and Skipper slept once. So, from psychoanalytic pers uh, perspective, Brick actually envies Maggie for her intimacy with Skipper because, uh, most importantly, Brick could not fulfill, uh, could not achieve his desire for Skipper because Skipper is dead now. So we see his frustration, uh, Brick's frustration, rising from unacceptable thoughts and feelings. Then this reveals, uh, by means of a defense mechanism, uh, a way of defense mechanism that we call displacement, that we learned in our uh, in, a, in one of our sessions with uh, the Year Sensei, it is quite obvious, really obvious from Brick's behavior and attitudes towards the the ones around him. And next slide. Uh huh. Brick's inability. Brick is also <clears throat> unable to move without his crutches which is uh, symbolizing a lack of his masculinity. His, um, his mobility is uh, deliberately restricted by the writer, by Thames Williams. I think that uh, the author himself also feels the same way, same disability, passivity, lacking control of even his own actions under the mendacious and judgmental eyes of the society. I anticipate that the author himself also feels the same way as Brick uh, does. So another point is that Tensor Williams is obviously associating himself with his protagonist Brick, so he converted patriarchal father figure to an ideal one for himself. Uh, and Tensa Williams added some positive traits later on, uh, added some positive traits to the father, to Big Daddy, such as compassion, care, and empathy. Uh, during the conversations between Brick and his dad, we witness, we see uh, direct criticisms, complaints, and blames that Brick put on his father. The author is doing this, uh, Tennyson Williams is doing this as a kind of compensation. But in fact, in fact, he shows how much he is uh, in need of a caring and supportive father in his life. Yes, let's move on with the next slide. Yes, as a final comment, um, I can say that there must be a subconscious reason for uh, Tennessee Williams 
using the problem words such as mendacity, as you see, uh, lying, drunk. So he repeatedly he uh, he repeats uses these words very often, uh, which is I think reflecting his subconscious. Uh, this is why he repeatedly uses all these uh, phrases, all these words in his play. So, we came to the conclusion. As a conclusion, uh, Briggs' malformed unconscious causes him to show um, constantly drunk, uh, aggressive, and rebellious traits as a defense mechanism uh, against what? Against all those mendacity, uh, as I said before, hypocrisy and the decadence, decadence of both family and society. So, uh, as being a social animal, break only needed somebody to love and to be loved by either men or women, doesn't matter. Even at the end of the play, he has to remain married and become a father in accordance with the expectations of the family construction and with the expectations of the society. And he is either uh, physically or spiritually uh, restricted, right? He is uh, totally restricted in terms of mobility and action. Uh, we see it in his um, disability to move, to walk also. And this is how I analyzed, how I tried to analyze Tennessee Williams's chief character, Rick's masculinity. Uh, in terms of psychoanalytic criticism in literature. So, dear sensei and friends, um, hope you enjoyed it and many thanks for uh, taking time and watching it. Uh, stay home and safe. Until next time, take a very good care. Goodbye everyone.